welcome to India today. This is Anita Brito in conversation with the team of mastermind behind Eternally Confused and Eager for Love. Hi guys, welcome to India today. Hi. Firstly, happy Hi. Women's Day <laughs> to all of you. Happy Women's Day. Thank you. Uh, I would like to begin by asking, uh, when did you all feel eternally, you know, eager and confused for love? Each one of you. When did I feel it? I think I'm still eternally confused yeah. and eager I'm for love. I'm still eternally Yeah, I'm still, still there. Eternal. Yeah. What about the others? I think um, we're all still there. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly still there. I, I don't think this is one of those things that leaves you. I mean, it's always kind of floating around, I yeah. think. Uh, I think I am still that. Eternally confused. Uh, yeah, I mean, eternally confused, yeah, of course, absolutely. Constantly at a crossroads wondering what to do next. All right. Uh, I would like to ask the director, what was the idea behind coming up with this series and how did everyone or who's sitting here come in the picture? Um, so I actually wrote the series uh, when I came back from college uh, and I realized that Bombay as a city was very similar to the college I was in in New York. Uh, and I realized that there's a lot of like, there's dating, there's romance, so many things happening, but it's not explored enough, I feel like in Indian content. So that's sort of what I, what I wanted to like explore. Um, and I have been working with XL Entertainment and then Tiger Baby for pretty much the last five years. So when the opportunity arose and they asked me if I wanted to make something, I had a script ready. <laughs> so I just sent it over to them and they liked it and that's how it, that's how it happened. You all have always, you know, been part of uh, people like, you know, you, you all encourage uh, new directors, you all, you all are part of that. Uh, what was the, uh, what was the reason actually uh, for being, you know, uh, encouraging him and, you know, asking him to be part of? Uh, I mean, he worked with us on Made in Heaven, which is a, a season one, which was a very, very tough, uh, tough uh, job, actually. And uh, uh, he was outstanding at what he did. And uh, he has a very, very uh, clear, unique voice. And you can, you, you'll, you'll, you'll pick that up in one conversation with him. I find him hysterically funny. Every time I'm around Rahul, I'm laughing. And uh, he's got a take on things. He's got an eye. He's got a perspective. And uh, the, uh, and when you meet someone that has a voice, and if you know that there, there's a director there. Uh, because that's all you need. You need a point of view. And he has a very, very unique, very original point of view. And uh, so for me, I knew that he's going to come up with something uh, good. I didn't realize what a good writer he was till I read his material. I just knew that he'd have ideas. But uh, once I read the material, I mean, I read his episodes like pum, 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 you know, just in one sitting. Uh, it was easy, it was breezy, it was heartfelt, it was honest, and it was funny. So um, uh, for me, it was, I, I always knew there was something about the guy, but when I read the material, I knew that I wanted in. What about anything that you all want? Yeah, same. I think very early on in one of the, you know, when we were sitting on one of the story sessions of MIH1, Rahul did come up with certain ideas which made me feel like he was uh, a very keen and, like he had a, you know, there's a very sensitive mind. And uh, having, you know, worked with him, I felt like he would make a good director. Um, no, I just second what uh, Reema and Zoya have said. And I think um, uh, on a slightly uh, um, uh, larger level, um, I, I think it's also important to uh, keep your ear on the ground, you know, for, for new talent. Yeah. Um, we've all been very fortunate, you know, with, with people who believed in us when we wanted to make our first films. You know, uh, and make and tell our stories that somebody out there believed in us and and gave us an opportunity, gave us a platform, produced our work, you know, to be able to do it. Um, and and as a part of that giving back, you know, it's 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 really important to also be able to be now now that we've been working for all these years, um, to be in a place where we can allow other people, okay. you know, that freedom and that opportunity to come and express themselves. Um, and I just feel really proud to be a part of this. You think OTT, uh, in this last two years, OTT has boomed in a different way and that has allowed uh, new ta talents, new, you know, actors, directors, everything. What is, uh, what is your take on this completely uh, different change that we are facing right now? I think it's the best time ever. I think it'd be a booming. It's the best time ever because you, uh, you have everybody, like creators and storytellers, have ideas that lend themselves to features and theatrical features. There are some ideas that you know are more niche, that you know, th those films will not 
require such a big budget. There are certain ideas that will be long format. They need eight episodes to tell this person's story. Certain things are short films. Suddenly we have access and a platform to be able to tell any kind of story we want. And uh, it's the best time ever. You know, I mean, and it's not just the platforms, it's also the technology. I mean, people are making films on their phone and putting it up on YouTube. So right now, it's the best time to be a storyteller or an actor or anyone because it, you're out there, you're getting work, everyone's working, and I, I, I can't think of anything more exciting. Yeah, I completely agree. Sorry, also, I, I feel a little bit of credit here needs to be given to Netflix, you know, to platforms like, like Netflix. Um, because they, again, they allow different stories to be, to be told. You know, um, there was a time where people had ideas and had stories, but there was no way of getting, getting them out. There was no, no avenue. You couldn't theatrically release them because it was too niche or who'd come and see it. You know, it's not massy enough or it's not commercial enough. And TV has a very different audience and a very different take on what kind of stuff works on TV yeah. in the GEC space. So what Netflix has done is, is created a, a, a very unique new space. You know, uh, and they've been adventurous and they've been brave in letting people come and tell the stories the way they want to say it, you know, without fear of, um, oh, who's going to star in it or, you know, there's no big director. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. You, it's, it's the content that matters eventually. So that also has played a huge role and I think a lot of, a lot of credit must be given. Yeah, so I think... Global doors because yeah. you're alongside the best of the world and anybody can access your work. Yeah, you know? yeah it's totally energized the scene, I think. Yeah. You know, the advent of OTT platforms like Netflix. Yeah, and it's given the audience also just a bigger variety of things to choose from. So instead of, you know, uh, <laughs> believing that the only thing you like is the only thing you get to see, now it's suddenly the menu is much uh, more varied. And so I feel the audiences are also consequently getting just better educated and smarter about what Exactly. Yeah. You know, and the thing is that, I mean, of course, like the obvious ones are like for writers, it's a, it's a big deal. You know, uh, for directors, it's a big deal. But what a lot of people don't realize, even for actors, it's so liberating. Yeah. You know, because you're so constricted in certain formats um, and in certain uh, ways when you make a film theatrically, because there is only that much that you're allowed to do. You know, otherwise, you know, it's going to run into some issue. You can't speak a certain way. Yeah. It'll be edited or it'll be bleeped. You know, and, and this gives you the freedom to kind of play characters and to do things that you won't get an opportunity to do otherwise. So it's also very liberating from an actor's point of view. I think that is why, you know, most actors are venturing into OTT platforms now without any fear of being typecast or being, you know, just said that this is a TV ka actor. Hai. Pehle waise bahut hota tha. So people were, you know, uh, not ready to uh, feature in, in television shows and all. What's your take on that? where people are ready now, actors are ready. I mean, the world is changing and uh, Netflix is at the forefront of that and I feel that it would be foolish to not go along with it. Anything? No, I, I completely agree with it. They also said, you know, uh, OTT is here, but uh, theatres will not run if OTT is here because people are, you know, uh, watching uh, shows at home at their convenience. Uh, but that has changed with Gangubai, Surya Vanshi. People are going to the theatres. Where theatres are running, even the OTT platforms are running smoothly. How do you feel about that? They have been trying to shut theatres down from <laughs> when TV started. So uh, they should just stop this narrative. Uh, when television came, they were like, theatres are done. Then video came, they were like, theatres are done. Then home theatre came and they were like theatres are done they need to stop theatres are not going to be done it's a They'll completely different done. experience yeah. It's a completely different experience. I want to go see a movie in a screen, which is a community viewing. I want to see it with people. I want to see the large screen. I will watch it. I want to watch a show in my room. I want to watch an episode when I have free time. It's a very personal experience. I mean, they, they, they're not interchangeable. So I don't think it's ever going to be done. I think it constant. They, they just, and I've been asked this question so many times at this point that no, sorry, uh, no offense, but uh, like even about theater, about OTT, about this, about you know being in different uh, uh, formats, formats being, uh, and it's always constructed as a this versus this and this versus this. But I don't think there's any need for a versus or a competition there. I think they all should coexist and they all should learn from each other. Like I think theatrical releases should learn from uh, the way long form storytelling is done. And I think long form storytelling has a lot to learn from being able to uh, have a beginning, middle, and end the way a film does, you know, it's just they have to keep they have to keep making each other grow. I don't think it has to be one or the other. Anything that you all want to? Um, no, I mean, I, I think there is uh, 
something known as a community experience which you can't take away hmm. you know um to be in a room with strangers and share exactly the same emotions for most of it you know uh, for 2 hours 2 and a half hours is something that you can't take away you know that it it brings people together in a certain way and and that will never go away um there's one aspect of just seeing a scre- a film on a large screen but that's not the reason that's not the only reason you go to a theater you go to a theater for something much more um you can't define it but there is about belonging to something that that's what happens that's the feeling that you get when you're in a theater and that that can't be taken away very true uh i would like to ask you all as uh, creators what excites you all the most as writers and directors sorry scripts like his <laughs> what excites it's a really big blanket question it's hard to answer that you don't know what you know connects are you saying in terms of is writing more exciting or directing more exciting so what no. excites you all as writers as well as directors what kind of uh, scripts or you know ideas that excites you i am neither so I'll i think i think i i'm i'm really into like uh, i mean I, i think it's the story it's the it's uh, i think it starts off first with does it emotionally touch you does it resonate on any level does it shift you does it emotionally move you does it make you laugh does it make you cry do you relate to it are you uh, have you learned something have you something it has to do something in you in terms of the story it has to resonate on some level that is exciting when you read writing but when you are talking about a director that takes you there it's like how do you translate that onto screen and uh, it's the milieu it's the world that's created it's how somebody tells a story with a camera because it is a visual medium so how is this person taken a camera and made me feel a particular way by just how they've used the camera as a pen so there's a it, it's a very different craft and uh, that can be really exciting when you watch certain directors and you're like oh my god they can they really know they have a handle on what they're doing so they're very different strengths but at the end of the day it's storytelling yes. you know whether you're writing it on paper you're writing it you know or you're Correct. doing it through a camera and through another medium so th- it, it's it's is this story working for me are these characters compelling me to follow them that's all i think yeah i i would say that combined with does this writer director have their own individual voice uh, i think that's that's equally as important you know or are they just a reflection of something else or someone else you know that you've seen and loved um so i think uh, having a voice and especially for new talent you know because we all get inspired by other people's work to do what we do but how do you take all that inspiration and not then become just a a copy you know of someone else what what do you, what have you taken from that like what is it about their work that you liked what you liked about them was that they had such an individual voice and an individual stamp on what they did and that's what you have to constantly endeavor towards is how do you maintain that you know at every given point in time and um and again sorry i want to bring it back to talking about rahul because his show does that you know it's very unique to him mm. and it's very unique to who he is to his life to his friends to his confusions i guess or the confusions that he's seen with his friends around him um and and that makes it very um it makes it relatable and it also makes it very enjoyable to see yeah. you know that that you're seeing something new happening here yeah it was co- cool to read uh, i got to read the script and then i got to watch the episodes at whatever stage they were before the project was done uh before i uh, signed up for the project and uh it's nice to meet somebody and see that he's written a show that's funny and smart and interesting about what he knows what he actually knows because i have other friends that you you know you'll read their script and it's about some tiny town in the states where a guy is trying to unravel a drug nexus and it's like you know nothing about this <laughs> you, you you why have you written this script <laughs> so you actually what you said is right you can you relate or do they yeah <laughs> maybe maybe you relate to the person you relate i was actually somewhere thinking you know are ha even i have thought like this when i was at that age did you all have uh, imaginary friends at a younger age <laughs> no comment <laughs> no. i think the question should be at what age is it uh, should you stop having it imagine <laughs> anyone would like to ask? i mean i def i think we all have a voice in our heads you know it may not be uh, vocalized in the way that 
<laughs> Wiz uh, vocalizes in Ray's head, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, Wiz is a metaphor more than a real thing. It's the metaphor for all the voices that go on in your head. And in this particular case, he's just disembodied those voices, you know, and, uh, sorry, embodied those voices actually, and made all of them seem like they're coming out of one item, but actually it's just... What's Sorry, going I'm going to so. completely digress here, but it reminded me of something I watched recently. I was watching a biography on Kishore Kumar, and Asha Ji was talking about him. And she said, when we used to be recording, he used to come for six months. He came holding the hand of an imaginary child to the studio. And he would say, auntie ko namaste bolo. And, the, and he would only say, namaste auntie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like this. And they would all talk to the girl, hey, namaste beta, kaise ho, and this, that, and the other. And then he's singing a song. <laughs> and the kid would say, Baba, ye gana meko acha nahi lag raha hai. He goes, are, aisa nahi kehte, sabko bura lag raha. Lekin aap hi nahi to kaha, hamesha sach bolo. Okay, all this stuff. And she's like, for six months, he would keep coming in with this thing until we started believing, we were brainwashed into believing that this kid actually exists. So he was like, yeah, yeah completely, an genius. absolute genius. Wow. Because you can comment then upon the song and it has, yeah, it's not exactly. you doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So good. Indirectly, you, yeah, indirectly you could say, I don't like this song, but I'm not saying it, right? <laughs> but you only said always speak the truth. <laughs> wow, I didn't know about this. Good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Jim, sorry, sorry to you know change the topic, but congratulations on Gangubai Katiawadi. Thank it, you. It has done wonders at box office. How does it feel? How are you feeling right now? Feels really good, but I haven't watched it yet. So I only got back into town uh, Sunday night, and yesterday was a packed day, and today is a packed day, and so maybe I'll get to watch it tomorrow. So I, I don't know yet. So I don't want to say uh, things about something I don't know anything about. <laughs> it was fun to shoot it, of course. It was brilliant, but I, I still haven't watched it. Anyone wants to comment on Gangubai Kathiwadi? I it? want to watch it. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, and uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of Ms. Bhatt and Mr. Sarv, <laughs> so I can't wait actually. And Ms. Bhatt is going international now. She uh, it was just announced today that you know she's going to be part of Netflix uh, film internationally. What's your reaction on that, everyone? Just a massive congratulations to yeah, her. Yeah, she must. And then all the best good for her. Yeah, absolutely. She's, she's, she's very hardworking and she's very focused on her work and good things should come to people like that. And she's a little genius when it comes to what she does. So she, she, she's, she's going to kill it. Uh, Farhan, you just said you're eternally confused, but your quest for love was recently uh, you know, fulfilled. Uh, how does it feel post-marriage? Sorry, I had to ask this. <laughs> Well, um, I don't know if it feels any different. I mean, Shabani and I have been together for many years now. You know, so I mean, this just on some level puts some kind of an official kind of tag to it. But apart from that, I mean, our relationship is amazing. You know, it, it has been since we started dating. Um, and now I've taken it to this, to another level together. But um, it just feels great, as always. Rahul, are you, what are your feelings on Farhan and Shabani? Yeah. When I um, first told you about this... <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction? What are your feelings? Did you want to bankroll my marriage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a, on a uh, personal level, what, what kind of shows did you all, uh, do you like watching and you know, what intrigues you and what is that one show recently that has blown your mind away? Anything on any platform? <clears throat> I mean the last one that blew my mind was Squid Games. I loved it. Others? Yeah, I recently watched uh, a show of this gentleman sitting right here. I sent him a message after I spoke to his director as well, to his producers as well, Rocket Boys. I absolutely loved the show. Um, it, it ticked all the boxes for me. You know, it was great drama. Um, the science aspect of it was just refreshing to see a show about something like that. Um, and the drama and, and great performances by all of them in that show. I absolutely loved it. Absolutely. Loved it. Thanks, Farhan. Jim, Farhan. Uh, I, I, I can watch, uh, I mean, I, I don't have a particular genre that I like. I watch most things, but currently I'm uh, very busy prepping a film for Netflix, so I don't have time. I haven't watched anything. They're making me work very hard. <laughs> Jim, anything that you watched recently? Uh, yeah, I watched a show called uh, The Great on uh, Hulu, actually. Um, it's really good. It's about... Uh, Catherine the Great and her marriage into the Russian uh, oligarchy and uh, it's written by the same guy that wrote um, The Favourite which I thought was a brilliant movie uh, and it's just so funny and well done and when a, I, I, I always feel 
I always love the most when a comedy takes on issues and manages to turn them all, the way we think about all of them on their head. I, I find that to be the most brilliant because I think if you attack it seriously, it is a bit easier, but for it to be consistently funny and sharp and also manage to deal with all of these issues like what is the role of uh, women in society, what is the role of religion in society, you know, and t tackle all of them and continuously subvert our ideas about them. Oh, it's just brilliant, brilliant show. Um, I don't know if it's a recent show, but I've been watching Killing Eve uh, of late, and I mm. think it's the incredible. new episode is here. New I actually started out. this week. I had never seen the show, and uh, I'm a big Phoebe Waller Bridges fan, so I was very excited to finally get to watch it. A killer show, actually. Literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my final question to all of you all: uh, In one word, how would you describe this series? Wh wherever, whoever wants to start. Fun. <laughs> Heartfelt. Rahul. Jim? Young adult. <laughs> I don't, I don't eternally confused and <laughs> eager yeah. to love. We, we should all just say one of the words. Yeah, Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you so much. It thank was lovely you. having thank a conversation you. with you all. And all the best for the, sh for the series. Thank you.